Welcome to Digital Asset News, to get top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them out of bite-sized pieces. Today, that's some pretty good stuff. First up, how will the US presidential election affect the price of Bitcoin? And the real question is here, is how is it going to affect the short-term and long-term also? Billionaire Jeffrey Gundlach says Bitcoin is a lie. And I think the problem here is not that Bitcoin is a lie, but a lack of understanding. We're gonna go through some of the things that this gentleman should learn about Bitcoin, and maybe how you can also educate your family and friends with a Bitcoin elevator pitch. Also, Tyler Winklevoss says institutional tsunami coming to Bitcoin after Square buys 50 million in BTC. And this was a story that I didn't really cover yesterday because I really thought to myself, what's the big deal? Jack Dorsey has already been a Bitcoin bull for the longest time, but there's a wrinkle in the story. And lastly, Brave is now the top rated browser on Google Play Store. And the question really is asked, how long before the masses understand just how great Brave is and the basic attention token, which is cryptocurrency? So we'll get into all that, but first let's get into the markets. Plus, I wanted to go over a quick poll that I put out where I talked about that I was going to be on Alex Mascioli's show today. And we're going to be talking to Ave founder Stanny, Stanny Kulichov. And the questions that I got, the majority was, is when will Ave support mortgages? And will Ave support longer term loans? Plus, why are the deposit rates so low? So he answered those and a couple more questions over at the Alex Maschioli Show, which I'll link at the very end. And I have to tell you, after listening to Stani about what's going on, this guy essentially invented DeFi. I might actually be a convert to the Ave token. But hey, let's talk about the market. So today is Friday, October 9th. It is about 1 p.m. Uh, Texas time. So let's see what's happening. So Bitcoin is up over 11,000. I like to see that. 1.5 for the 24 hour and 4% for seven day. And that is massive. Where goes Bitcoin, so does the rest of the market. Ethereum up to 363. And I was on Alex's show and there's two traders there. And they're they're the few traders that I actually listened to. It is CJ and Monty, and they were the ones that had predicted Chainlink to go down to 1050. And this was when I was at 18. I thought I was going to the moon. And they're like, nope, going to 1050. And I was like, you guys are full of it. And guess what? Totally right. Uh, and they're talking about their prediction for Ethereum, and I gotta believe them. So jump over there. They just tell you it's gonna go to 380, and and, and there's a lot more room for it to run. But the, the technicals, if you're a TA person, it's pretty fascinating. I honestly don't understand it. But uh, I just like to hear when TA people say what I think is going to happen. And that's always good. Anyhow, Tether's Tether. Uh, it's uh, with a whopping 15 billion. Tether's, uh, you know, pegged the US dollar. XRP pegged the quarter, apparently, because it's at a 25 cents. I'm just kidding. It's just XRP. Watch out. Bitcoin Cash, 1% at 236. Not too bad. And everything's up. And also, Chainlink is up above $10. Almost 10% gain, 6.2 for the week. I like to see that. Polkadot above $4 fantastic three and a half percent for cardano bitcoin sv i mean look everything's up so if you're holding coins congratulations if you didn't get shaken out um congratulations or if you did even the bonus uh, round which was buy things down the dip congratulations on that it's all about strong hands i think i know where the market's going i think it's going to change the world and i see great things it's just to hold on and see the actual results but uh, as far as like the gains today, nothing's really too fantastic. Ave up 6%. Uh, and I gotta tell you, <laughs> I gotta tell you, Stani's a smart guy. And uh, what he was talking about, again, I might actually invest into Ave itself. Uniswap above, well, like 329, whatever. 60% for UMA, wow. If you're old in UMA, congratulations, because that thing was falling like a stone. And that's pretty much about it. Let's jump into today's big articles. So first up, uh, this is a question I get quite a lot, actually. So I want to answer it. Uh, how will the U.S. presidential election affect the price of Bitcoin? This is a pretty good one. So if you don't know, the U.S. presidential election is between President Donald J. Trump and Joe Biden. And that's going to happen in November when everybody votes. Now, will there actually be a clear-cut winner? Who knows? Especially with the uh, ballots being mailed out late registrations, all those types of things. Don't know, unless it is a huge landslide, uh, it might be a little bit of a put off as far as when they actually announce the winner, but we will see. So the big question is what's gonna happen with the market? So this is actually from Big Cheds, <laughs> Trader Big Cheds. And I always laugh at this whole thing about, you know, when, when, when they quote people who are on Twitter or YouTube, whatever else, and they just have the 
goofiest names. It's like this is almost at in one point cryptocurrency was almost a trillion dollar market, and we're quoting people like Big Cheds and Potato Foot and uh, just you know Doggy Trader. It just sounds weird. I mean that's just, that's just me. But Big Cheds <laughs> says he's a trader. He says if we have a clear winner and an easy transition of power, I did not see much of an impact on the price per coin. On the other hand, if we have a close and or contested election, we should see a bounce in risk off assets like gold and Bitcoin. And nothing against Big Cheds. I'm sure he's a smart guy. This is a well thought out sentence. That's just the name is hilarious. But here's how I see it. And I actually covered this in uh, a couple of episodes previously, where they looked at all the different presidential elections and what happened afterwards. And it's always pretty much the same thing. There's either a little bit of a dip or a bump, and it goes right back to normal. So in this situation, this is what I think. Donald J. Trump, if he gets reelected, there will be a bump in the traditional market. Plus, there'll be a bump in cryptocurrency because there's a little bit of a correlation if you haven't seen it. However, it will go down after that initial bump because there's a lot of problems going on, not just in America, but in the global economy. I mean, there are, first of all, in America, small businesses are shutting down. They are not coming back. We're looking at 20%. The quantitative easing, there's so much money being printed. You cannot print that much money without repercussions. There are people that are waiting for a stimulus check that will not get passed before the election. And even after the election, who knows when it's going to actually be passed. The GDP is falling. There are different problems with employment. It is a mess. And the only way to really get back is just is going to take time. But over time, to get to that recovery, it's not going to be a V-shaped recovery. It's going to take a lot of uh, time. And that's when the market is going to go down. However, the market, in my opinion, is just rich people's feelings. Because a lot of people aren't investing in the market. They're just average Joes and they just need uh, relief. So this is going to get to what Crypto Windy, uh, she's another Twitter, Twitter trader. She says, with an event like COVID, one would assume that Bitcoin would pump due to financial market uncertainty. However, we are not seeing that, she said. So that's the same thing, right? You're going to have all these people. They're going to need money. They're not going to really uh, get these types of relief, especially if they're losing their jobs. So that's on this on the side of Donald J. Trump, if he gets elected. If Joe Biden gets elected, here's what'll happen. Uh, there'll be a dip initially uh, because the markets are fearful of what Joe will do. And Joe will probably raise taxes because he has to. And he's going to cut the uh, Trump, uh, Trump tax cuts. And what that means is that uh, a lot of rich people are going to have to pay more taxes. They don't like that. So what's going to happen? You're going to see a slump in the market. It may be an initial rise after that, but it's all going to be the same. It's all going to go down. It doesn't really matter. It's just like what I talked about. Small businesses going down, GDP decreasing, all that quantitative easing. You got to get the money somewhere. So it's going to have to be taxes or something else. So the market is going to go down because we what just happened before is going to pay is going to play out uh, later on. What do I see with cryptocurrency? Same type of thing. I do not care what happens tomorrow, in a week, in a month. What I care about is where this whole train is going in the next one, two, five, 20 years. And I can see that cryptocurrency has a very bright future. Anyhow, I'll continue on. And this will just finish up. Wendio says markets need money coming in to flourish. And I'm not certain that will happen right now as the middle class is holding onto their capital. So that's true and false. Well, it's totally true that people are holding on to capital because they don't know where their, where their next check is coming from. They, people are getting laid off left and right and the stimulus package isn't coming in. So what are they going to do? They're going to hold their money. But that's not the thing. Again, the markets, the traditional markets, the S&P 500, the Dow, that's not by like, you know, uh, Sally Joe, who works at Walmart, she's not propping up that whole system. Uh, who's propping up the whole system is a lot of rich people. And again, the market is rich people's feelings. The market is not indicative of the economy. However, you can only slump so much until the, the actual market starts to slump along with it. So again, here's what I'm going to do. It's the same thing I've been doing since... Well, since I figured it all out, which was dollar cost average, I'm not going to drop all my money into it. I'm going to just sit in the back. I'm going to put my little my little amounts of money into my positions and then just dollar cost average in. If Ethereum goes down, if Bitcoin goes down, if Chainlinks goes down, yeah, great. I get to get it. I get to buy it for cheap. If it goes up, hey, I made some gains. That's really all there is to it. I'm looking forward to see how it all plays out. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on. Next up, Bitcoin's a lie. 
Okay. Billionaire Jeffrey Gundlach. I think it's Gundlach, Gundlach. I don't know. But before I read this whole thing, this guy is not a hater. Uh, he's already talked about Bitcoin, how it can go up to the moon. But in this situation, he's like, I just don't get it. And I understand because this is a very complex um, situation or a complex market to understand. You just need a little education. And we'll get to that in a second. So American investor Jeffrey Gundlach whose net worth is about $2.2 billion, hey, good for him, has expressed his aversion to Bitcoin, calling it a lie in a recent interview. He mainly takes issue with Bitcoin's lack of anonymity or anonymousness, or however you want to say it, being anonymous. Even though it masks the identity of its users, all transactions are permanently stored on a blockchain and can be traced by anyone. So that's just it. If corporations get into it and they have a cryptocurrency account and they have one wallet, which would be pretty ridiculous, but let's just say, for example, that they have one wallet for all their Bitcoin and you know um, that wallet, what it is, belongs to MicroStrategy or whatever. You can track all the different income, the outflows of every type of, of, of Bitcoin that goes in and out and you can see it. So I always think like this, like if... Enron was able to do that with, let's say they, they wanted to prove to their investors that they have a ton of cryptocurrency coming in and they are liquid and flush and everything else. They could say, look, here is our Bitcoin wallet. You can track how much is going in and out and you can see that we're actually flush with cash. Unfortunately, uh, they you couldn't do that. Same thing with Tracy, or with Tracy, with Bernie Madoff. Bernie, he was saying that there was all these different things coming in and it wasn't so you could attract that very easily. However, the problem with these types of things is he's correct. Unless you know the wallet, who it belongs to, all you're just looking at is numbers. But you can track wallets. You can see the ins and outs and you can see the flows. So maybe, I mean, if you're super rich, maybe you don't want to have people track you. Just saying. But he states, I don't believe in Bitcoin. I think it's a lie. I think that it's, it's very tracked, traceable. I don't think it's anonymous. And again, unless you know the Bitcoin wallet, you don't know who it belongs to. And again, uh, Gunlunch is not a hater. He actually said that uh, Bitcoin could sort of 15,000 this year because of the dollar's weakness. So this is the thing. And he talks about how he believes that a good store of value would be like his art, his paintings, which he's right. It is a great store of value to have a very expensive painting because it retains its value. However, it's the same thing with, with Bitcoin. If you don't know about it, because to other people, when I explain to him, like, wait, 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 it doesn't exist in reality. It's just on a blockchain. It's just on these nodes, all these different computers. Well, how is that value? Because I can't touch it. I can't feel it. So how does it actually have value? And I always say the same thing. I always hold up a dollar bill. What gives this value? Well, the full faith of the U.S. government. Well, guess what? The purchasing power has been decreasing since 1913. On top of that, what gives gold value? It's because we give it value, because people give it value. And it's the same thing with Bitcoin. I always give my elevator speech. I go, look, Bitcoin is digital gold. Unlike gold, it is truly finite at only 21 million. With gold, we keep finding more. I can send Bitcoin to anyone, anywhere in the world for next to nothing, and it's, it happens within 30 minutes. It's the best performing asset class of the decade it used to cost a nickel and now it costs almost eleven thousand dollars and it's why i'm heavily invested just by saying those things people are like all right tell me more and i think these types of things could help out people with education and just to know what exactly it is but again it's all about the elevator pitch and just making it so you're not confusing the hell out of people there's a video i'll link at the end it's called the bitcoin elevator pitch i'll have you watch it that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on. Next up, Tyler Winklevoss says institutional tsunami coming to Bitcoin after Square buys 50 million in Bitcoin. And if you noticed, I did not highlight anything because here's the whole story. The whole story is this. And this is something that people said, why didn't you cover this yesterday? Because, you know, Square, Jack Dorsey, Twitter, same guy, uh, they invested $50 million into Bitcoin. And I was like, is that really a story? I mean, good for them. But Jack Dorsey is a huge Bitcoin bull. Jack Dorsey's Twitter handle has one word, Bitcoin. Jack Dorsey's company, Square, half of their revenue came from Bitcoin. Why wouldn't they invest into Bitcoin? That only makes sense. Now, to us, uh, this is not a big story. And that's really the, the, the big thing. People on the outside, I mean, if they hear these stories, they're just like, eh, okay, 50 million in Bitcoin, all right. It's going to take multiple people, multiple CEOs, multiple corporations to get into it. And to me, I just didn't think it was that big of a thing. Now, when you string all these things together, Michael Saylor, uh, MicroStrategy uh, CEO, uh, investing half a billion into Bitcoin. Paul Tudor Jones, again, investing one or two percent in the futures. It is futures, but Paul Tudor Jones is one of those guys. 
also other companies that are investing into it, which aren't that many. When my, when Bill Gates comes out for Microsoft and says, you know what, we're investing half a billion dollars into Bitcoin, that's when I'll cover that story because that's a big story. It's not just Bill Gates and it's not just us that are, will be impressed by that. It's everybody else. We need to get everybody else out there. And when you see these different CEOs and companies start to FOMO in, that is when things get big. And they're only going to because what do you think is going to happen with Bitcoin? Is it going to go down to 5,000? Yeah, maybe. But I got to tell you, over the time, over years, it's going to increase. So these companies, when they see people like Michael Saylor, when they see somebody like Jack Dorsey and all the different CEOs come in and go, you know what? Our money's on fire. There is too much inflation because of the quantitative easing. We're going to take our treasury and put it into Bitcoin. These are the people that are going to be looked at as visionaries, the ones who made their stockholders so happy because they invest in the Bitcoin. And the other ones that don't, these stockholders, these CEOs, these CTOs, or CFOs, they're going to look at them like, why didn't you buy Bitcoin when it was $11,000, you moron? That was at 2020 in the late parts. Look at 2022, and now Bitcoin's worth $150,000. You could have made it so much money, you failed we're going to have to fire you. Well, it might not be that bad, but you understand what I'm saying. A lot of the companies will get into it. And when it's just one, then comes two. And from two, then comes four. And all of a sudden, now you have a FOMO situation. And I think that is what is going to happen. So great for Jack Dorsey. I didn't, I totally expected this to happen. Let's see what happens with the other corporations. Let's move on. And last up, Brave is now the top rated browser on Google Play Store. This is fantastic. And why is this fantastic? Because it leads to mass adoption. And those are my stories. So I just uh, highlighted this section just to make my point. Brave has soared past competitors on the Google Play Store, becoming the top rated browser and leaving Google's own Chrome in the dust. Now, just so you know, it's the highest rated browser, not the most downloaded, but the top rated browser. So it's got a rating of 4.8 out of 5 from over 238,000 total reviews. That's pretty good. So they have a competitive edging of Chrome, Firefox, and all the other different uh, browsers. But again, this is going to lead to mass adoption because when people start to figure it out, uh, as far as Brave. And first of all, if you don't know, uh, in the description of every one of my videos, there's a link to download Brave. Super simple. And Brave is great. It's actually what I use uh, when I pull up articles and I'm recording for Digital Asset News. Because guess what? I hate when all these different things pop up, all these ads pop up. In Brave, I don't deal with that nonsense, which is awesome. Also, uh, I get paid in, in BAT, Basic Attention Token, which is a cryptocurrency. And when people figure it out, like, wait, 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 I can peruse the internet and check out the YouTubes and go on the Twitters and I can go on Facebook and all the different places and not have to deal with all these stupid ads and they're going to pay me in cryptocurrency, which has real world value and I can cash out or I can tip people and do all these different things with it. <laughs> well, sign me up. It's only going to take a little bit of time. And then that's just a gateway crypto, just like Bitcoin is a gateway crypto into all the other fantastic projects that are out there. So let me know what you think in that article or in the uh, comment section. I think this is a fantastic one for cryptocurrency and digital assets. And that is it for today. So thanks for sticking with me through the whole video. I really appreciate it. If you don't know, I got a second channel. It's called Digital Asset News Clips. And because I talk too much sometimes, I like to break down my clips and uh, put them in here. So I made this channel for two reasons. One is because time is money. And if I break down the clips, it's easier for you. And second, it's a backup in case YouTube wants to ban me. <laughs> So I do this nice little uh, digital asset news clips and you can check that out. There's a link in the description of every one of my videos. You can check that out and go over there. Also, if you got time, there's the uh, Ave founder and he's going to talk about uh, everything that we that uh, all the questions that we had as far as the mortgage, uh, the fixed rates and what's going on with Ave. It was a pretty good one. I'm on there. And uh, of course, uh, everybody else who is smarter than me is on there. So check that out. I'll link at the very end. And that's it for today. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow.